Pancake Swap, Sushi Swap, Bakery Swap. There is so much food in DeFi. These names are funny, but don't let them fool you because these projects are very successful. Like Pancake Swap on Binance Smart Chain, which became the first decentralized exchange in DeFi even before Uniswap. Yes. So in this video, I will show you how to fork Pancake Swap so that you can create your own decentralized exchange and leverage the current hype on the Binance Smart Chain. Since Binance Smart Chain uses the technology of Ethereum, you can reuse your Ethereum knowledge for your PancakeSwap fork. No need to learn a new blockchain technology. If you don't know me, I'm Julian and on Eat the Blocks, I teach blockchain development. The first feature of PancakeSwap is trading. On PancakeSwap, you can buy and sell BEP20 tokens in a decentralized way. BEP tokens on Binance Smart Chain are the equivalent of ERC20 tokens on Ethereum. For this feature, PancakeSwap just did a copy and paste of the smart contracts of Uniswap. The best documentation you will find about the trading feature of PancakeSwap are not on PancakeSwap but on Uniswap. And on my channel, I've also made an introduction to Uniswap for developers, so I recommend to first check out this video and after come back here. Once you understand how Uniswap works, it's time to fork the trading feature of PancakeSwap. On another video on my channel, I show how to fork Uniswap and forking the trading feature of PancakeSwap is very similar. There are just a few differences. The names of the repo and some contracts are slightly different. I put here some tips about this and if you find some other differences, you should be able to figure it out. It's almost the same thing. So go watch my video on forking Uniswap and apply it to the code of PancakeSwap with the adjustments I mentioned. In my video on forking Uniswap, I forgot to mention something super important. It's called the init hash. This is something that is used in this file in the periphery repo and this is necessary to interact with the pair smart contracts. For your project, you are going to change the code of the PancakeSwap contracts, at least the name of the smart contracts and you will also probably use different compilation parameters. This will result in a different init hash. So you do need to recompute this init hash and replace the value in this file. To calculate this init hash, you can do this in JavaScript and it's explained in this thread on GitHub. Next, to get some liquidity in your exchange, you can do what we call a vampire attack. In a vampire attack, you will attract liquidity providers of another exchange like PancakeSwap by offering them some incentives if they migrate to your exchange. This requires you to have a migrator smart contract and this is also something that I explained in my video on forking Uniswap. And for your information, you also have a migrator contract in the PancakeSwap periphery repo. If you use a migrator contract, you don't have to use the one of PancakeSwap, you can just use whatever implementation you want, but I just mention it here as a reference. Once you have all your smart contracts, you have to deploy them. Because Binance Smart Chain uses the same technology as Ethereum, the deployment procedure is very similar. You will need to compile smart contracts and deploy them using a framework like Truffle. Everything is exactly like a deployment on Ethereum, except that you will need some BNB token to pay for transaction fees instead of Ether. And you will not use an endpoint to Infura, but instead you will use the public endpoint of the Binance Smart Chain. And in my video on Binance Smart Chain, I show how to deploy a smart contract to Binance Smart Chain with the URL you need to use, the testnet, etc. And once you have deployed your smart contract, then you need to take care of the front end. To fork the front end, you will need to clone this repo. Inside this front end, you will need to change the address of the smart contract and the init code hash that I talked about before. And of course, you probably will not have exactly the same features as PancakeSwap, so you can remove the things that you don't need. It's quite easy to do. And you also probably want to customize the styling, of course. And finally, when you have made all the changes you want, you will run the build command to create the final HTML, JavaScript, and CSS files. No need to use something like AWS to deploy your static frontend. It's completely overkill. Just use a specialized solution to host static frontends like Verso. You will just need to drag and drop your files to their user interface, and boom, your frontend is deployed like via magic. It's quick and easy. There are many other features of PancakeSwap I haven't mentioned. They have the farming feature, they have some NFTs, they have a mechanism to launch new tokens called IFO or Initial Farm Offerings and in the future they want to have lending and borrowing like a compound on Ethereum. 
Obviously, you don't have to include all of these features in your PancakeSwap fork. To get started, you need to at least fork the trading feature. And later, you can progressively add other features in your V2, V3, etc. In this video, I mentioned a couple of other videos that are useful for PancakeSwap fork and I put all of the links to these videos in the description below. And for your next video, you should continue with this tutorial on how to fork Uniswap. This will help you to understand how to fork PancakeSwap. I will see you there.